spending time with her husband, friends, family, including her 12 grandchildren. In her spare time, she connects and celebrates with the women involved in motorsports, taking you behind the wall about their journey of life, racing, and how they juggle everything to make it all work. Welcome to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Strap in, window nets up, the pedals are down, and when the green flag drops, we go. Hello, everyone. This is Melinda Russell with Racing Girls Rock Podcast, and I'm so excited for you to listen to our podcast today. We have a very special guest on our show. I have followed this young lady from afar, watching her racing career and kind of keeping track of her a little bit. And then I was so excited to see that she was on the Racing Wives show that we've all been watching. And so today it's my privilege to introduce Amber Balkan. She's going to be our guest today. Welcome to the show, Amber. Thank you so much for having me. So Amber, tell me a little bit about yourself. We'll get started first. Um, you know, where did you grow up and, and kind of what you're doing now and how did you get started in racing? So tell us your story. So I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. So close to you up north there. And I grew up racing go-karts. I actually raced in North Dakota, Minnesota, mainly when I did race go-karts. Then I raced four er, lightning sprints, which are mini sprints. And then I raced 410 sprint cars. And that was also all done within the Northern States. Uh, 2014 was when I raced 410 sprint cars, and that's when I caught the eye of the NASCAR diversity program. I uh, won a lot in go-karts and in mini sprints, was doing really well in the 410 sprint cars, and uh, so they really opened my mind to what was possible for my racing career, and I went to the NASCAR diversity combine. It was my first time in a stock car on pavement, and uh, it was tough. Kyle Larson and those kind of guys make it look a lot easier than it is, but the transition's definitely difficult. Um, but I like challenges, and for me, this was just another challenge. My 410 ride was expired after that year, and uh, I was looking for different opportunities. So uh, that's when I decided to, you know, really try to make not only a hobby out of racing, but make it a full-blown career and, and chase the pavement side of it. So that's kind of how I transitioned from dirt track racing to pavement. I moved to North Carolina a few years ago to pursue the NASCAR side of the industry, and it's been a learning curve for sure. It's a very difficult industry. Uh, it requires a lot of monetary backing and unfortunately I don't come from a wealthy family since I was 10 years old my dad said if you want to race you got to do it on your own and that means funding your own racing and working on the car yourself so um, there I was at 10 years old knocking on doors getting sponsors you know hundred dollars here hundred dollars there so I really have always kind of been behind the eight ball in my racing career I've never really had the best equipment you know when I raced dirt because I had to fund it on my own and um, I'm still now facing Facing that same struggle today of lack of finances and being able to get sponsorship to race at these higher levels. You know, that that's something that I hear over and over. It's just so hard to get those sponsors. And honestly, I bet it was, even though the money might not have been high, but it was easier at 10 years old because who can turn down a really pretty cute little 10 year old girl knocking on the door, you know, it's, it's really harder as an adult, I think. Would you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. And also when I raised go-karts, I think I only needed about a thousand dollars or so for the season where now I'm needing millions of dollars. So instead of talking to local companies that, you know, fixed my tire for me or my dad knew through his companies or anything like that, now I'm needing to talk to corporate companies um, that are worth billions of dollars. So it's a completely different playing field. It, it really is. And, you know, people, I, I think more and more people are understanding the costs behind racing because it's talked about a lot more now, you know, especially when, um, when uh, the Truex team, you know, disbanded. And, and that guy's got a great big company, but he can't put all his money into racing. And so that, I think, opened some eyes to people that, about how much it does really cost. It's in the it's in the millions. I somebody told me to have a decent team, half a million dollars a race, and that just blows me away. That's that's with the best, you know, equipment. That's your right. travel. That's all the the behind the scenes people that 
have to be paid. And there's just so many details. It's not just the car that costs, it's, it's all the background stuff that really costs the money. So, um, yeah, it's, it's tough, but, you know, you just have to keep getting your face out there, getting your name out there, telling people what you're doing. And, and I always say you, ha you have to ask, you know, it's already a no if you don't put yourself out there and ask. So uh, sometimes that's tough, but um, it's, it's what has to be done. So, um, have you, did you race this year in 2019? I did. I did a few races with Kyle Busch Motorsports and I just had a year of terrible luck, mechanical issues, um, guys taking me out. It was just a year of bad luck. I qualified while well. my last race actually was in Irwindale, California, uh, in a super late model with a different team and qualified third, first time at the track. And the team was really happy with my performance, but lap two, I got turned into the wall. So, uh, it's, it's been, last year was it was a sorry this year was a tough year but i'm now just focusing on 2020 full force finding sponsorship for 2020 i'd love to run in the arca series they are now combining the arca and k and series which was just right. announced yesterday which is really cool so i think there'll be a lot of eyes i think it'll be huge competition combining those series and i think it'll be a really really great series it's really great uh, television broadcasting as well so i think there's a lot more mm -hmm. benefits in that series for a sponsor to want to be a part of. And that's what I'm trying to sell right now. Yeah, I think so too. I, I was glad to see that they combined those. I think that's a good move and I agree. It'll get a lot more exposure now because it's not competing against each other. It's one series. And uh, we, we follow the, or I follow the ARCA series. Um, a young man's, um, Carson Hosevar from here in Kalamazoo races that some, and he's a good young man, a good racer. You'll, you'll cross paths with him. So I, I keep close tabs on that as well. So how, how about how much money are you going to need? If you wanted to race the full season yes, next year, let's just put it out there. Let's see who we can get to get a hold of you. And, and how much, how much money are you looking for? So I need about 1.3 to $1.5 million. Okay. So, right. So in order to get that, you know, I, what I always do is I take that amount and I divide it by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and see how many, how many people do I need if I have 50 people that are going to pay, you know, and that kind of breaks it down. And, and that's helpful. It's also, um, as a woman, what I see for you is you could easily become a spokesperson for a makeup brand or a clothing brand or um, hair, hair salon, you know, something like that that's national because you can do things and support those businesses that the guys can't do. And, and so, right. And, and, you know, the, we can't always go back year after year to the same old, same old sponsors. I'd love to see some women-based businesses or businesses that cater to women on the side of those race cars. It was interesting. I saw, I can't remember now whose car it was. It said swab for men on their race car. Now that's really cool. I don't know why they had to put for men on the race car. Swab is swab. I buy swab and they have a huge, you know, so I, it kind of brought it home that it shouldn't just be that it should be, swap for women then or or that so i encourage you to think outside the box and and think about what products do you use what could you promote and um let's get you some big sponsors and get you on the track absolutely when i do look for potential sponsors i try to align with companies that are woman based or um have a woman equality type of message or, or mission to them i was very grateful enough to partner with Tavia, which is a company that sponsored me last year, or sorry, this year, uh, for one race with Kyle Busch Motorsports. And what Tavia is, they're a feminine product subscription service. So if you need tampons, pads, you get them delivered right to your door instead of having to go to the drugstore and buy them. And the best part about it is not only is it really convenient and you get your drugstore brands, but you're, every time you subscribe and order to Tavia, they will give back a socially acceptable feminine product to girls in underdeveloped countries. So you're helping change the world and helping 
keep girls in school and helping provide them jobs. So it's not only convenient and easy and just as and at the exact same price, but you're helping give back to women as well. So that was really important for me to be a part of that. And they're a smaller company, they're a startup, so they don't really have the budget to do the you know million and a half that I need for next year. But those are the type of companies that I want to be partnered with. You know, I really use racing as a platform to inspire and empower other women to fulfill their full potentials and be them best their best selves. And so for me to partner with a company that has a strong message and has similar values and missions that I do is really important for me. I obviously want to be on the racetrack first and foremost, but it just makes it that much more special if I can be partnered with a company that aligns with my values. Absolutely. And I, I, I had seen that company and I looked it up to see what, what more about it. And I'd never heard of them. So now, you know, the exposure they got, probably they're not even aware of because at 63 years old, I don't require those products anymore. Thank goodness. But, but I saw it and I thought, what, what a great idea. So those are the kind of companies that you know are good startups who want to get their name out but you know if they can give ten thousand or twenty thousand or whatever and you get a few of those we're going to get you on the track i know i know we are so look for some more of those and if you're a business owner out there and you're listening to this we definitely want you to get a hold of myself or amber and i'll get you in touch with her because we want young women like Amber on the racetrack. We want them sharing what they're doing and encouraging other women and girls to maybe venture out into a sport that typically has been a man's sport. And, and now we've got all these young gals that are interested. And so we've got to support them every way we can. So I, I appreciate that you shared that story about, about them. So Amber, you were on a television show. I call it a television show. It was on the internet, you know, uh, Racing Wives is where I normally watched it was on my laptop. But um, are you able to share a little bit about how you got involved with that and what your role was and maybe some little is there any little behind the scenes things that you can share with us? Absolutely. So it was definitely different doing a TV show because I can't say I've had cameras follow my life around before. Um, I think that I live a pretty normal life, but to have cameras follow me was definitely different. How I got involved in this in the first place was through Samantha Bush. So Samantha and I met a few years back and she saw that my first year on pavement, I started winning races. Um, previous to that, I met her really briefly and I took that few minutes I had with her to share my story with her and tell her what was what I was about, what I've done, what I'm trying to do, what my goals were, and um, just really wanted to let her know that I was willing to work really hard to get to where we needed to go, and uh, I'm very driven, and she listened to everything I had to say and kept it in her brain so when she saw me winning she actually reached back out to me and said i've always wanted a female at Kyle Busch motorsports and i really believe you would be the perfect fit and so that's how we came about and during that she was she had filmed the pilot to racing wise at that time denny hamlin's girlfriend was in it she was not able to do the show anymore so it kind of opened up a spot and she reached out to cmt said hey amber is not a wife of a driver but she is a driver and i'm interested in having her race for us so what do you think of that and they interviewed me fortunately they liked me and that's how i ended up on the tv show so that that's very cool and i know um you know at least I've been told, and even I even had Samantha mention this, that it, a lot of it is scripted. It's not necessarily 100% just natural of what's happening. So um, the things that are scripted, you know, we have to kind of, as a person watching, we have to kind of try to figure out what part the TV people are writing to make good TV, right? And then the part that's genuine. And, and sometimes that's hard for people watching to figure out, you know, what is what. So can you share a little bit about the scripted part versus what was really just authentic? Yeah, so the baseline of everything is absolutely real. I mean, I am a race car driver. I am trying to find sponsors. I am trying to race for KBM. Um, there's just certain things that were highlighted or or edited to maybe 
be more dramatic than than it was or um a little exaggerated i guess you could say and mm -hmm. you know obviously i am big on sharing myself through social media however i have 100 percent control of what i put out there on social media with the television show when you're the talent you don't have 100 percent control of what gets put out there so the at first i had a hard time with that because i have always really tried to stay very authentic to myself and who i am and wanted my fans always feel like they could come to me that i was relatable and and because i do come from humble beginnings i'm a dirt track girl from canada you know and i want everyone to know me for who i am and i think at the beginning of the show might have not shown me i think to who i am as a person i think towards the end of the show you got to actually see a little bit more of the real amber uh but mm -hmm. so that was hard to to know that Oh, what I'm watching, that's, I feel like that's not really me, but at the end of the day, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to gain more exposure and um, that's what I need for sponsorship. And that's my number one goal and priority is finding sponsorship so I can be racing full time. So I'm very grateful for the platform that the show gave me. And um, it's really cool, all the messages I got after the show from girls and moms and um, all really positive. So that made uh, the, the few rough weeks worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I kind of cringed a couple times just from following you, knowing kind of who you are and then how you were portrayed. I kind of cringed because I was like, oh, that's not fair. But I get how it works. I, you know, that, and, and that's just, that's television. But it was an amazing opportunity for you, I know. And it really, your, your name and face now are much more recognizable um probably around the world because i i know i i had a gal in uh, australia that reached out to me and said i love racing wives <laughs> so people were watching all over the place yeah that For was super sure. fun. I sent out some merchandise this week and one of them went to brazil and i was like this is crazy i'm sending them really all over the world it, it really is the you know what you do now the reach is not like it used to be there the reach of that you have through social media and the internet is is worldwide and i i'm amazed sometimes when i check my facebook stats at the countries that people have looked at what i'm doing it's it's six i've had 63 different countries somebody wow. in 63 different countries reach out and look at what i'm doing and that just that blows me away honestly it's hard to believe but so fun so we're looking for sponsorship for you for next year. What else do you have going on? What else do you do besides racing? So I pretty much spend all of my time looking for sponsors. Um, it takes up a lot of time. It is really hard. I'm essentially, I'm my own marketing person, salesperson, PR person. I do all my own merchandise. I'm the one packing the orders and going to the mail and mailing them out. Um, I basically ha manage and handle all of my racing and most people in my position have a manager and have a marketing team and have a PR girl and have this whole team around them that helps them with all of them stuff but I'm um, essentially a one woman show right now um, I also have some part-time gigs that help me make a little bit of money on the side too and so all that combined I'm I'm busy I also work out a lot because racing is a lot more physical than most people realize. So I want to make sure that when that time does come where I have the sponsorship, I'm ready to go in the car that I'm physically able to. And it's once I hop in, it's like riding a bike and I don't miss a step. Right. Exactly. It, it, it is, you know, pretty, pretty much every girl that I talk to that's in the, like I'd say from ARCA up or even the CRA series, they all work out and they, they all say, it's very physically demanding on your body and you know you just think about sunday uh it was 130 degrees in those race cars you know yeah. a normal person that's not in excellent shape is not going to do well in that in that race and so you know that's another thing that i think is is such a good thing about this sport is that it does keep you in good physical shape it also allows you to share that with other girls and women who maybe need to do that a little bit more i'm going to raise my hand in that case mm -hmm. but but um it's the well-rounded athlete you know it's 
I, I've heard people say, oh, race car drivers aren't athletes. Well, I'll put any race car driver up against um, another, you know, sports person and, and they can hold their own or if not better because of, you know, how they, how they stay in condition and everything. I found it interesting that a lot of these um, pit crew members are recruited from college athlete, athletes and, and it makes sense, doesn't it, for that to happen. So um, yeah, the, the workouts and that, you probably could write a workout regimen and, and things, you know, we got we to gotta brand you and get you, get you going here, Amber. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the funny thing you said about the pit crew members, coming from different athletics is my boyfriend plays football and not only are so many of our workouts similar um, between football players and race car drivers but if he comes to the shop with me the crews are trying to recruit him to be on the crew <laughs> because yeah. he's a football player they're like, an awesome jack man so right. uh, there is a lot of similarities between racing and football that people wouldn't necessarily think of um, but yeah I train five to six days a week and uh, right now I'm mostly working on my strength. My cardio is there. I'm working on my strength right now. And then when it gets closer to the race season of next year, I'll probably up my cardio a little bit more. But I just want to make sure I'm really strong. You know, naturally men are stronger than women. So I want to make sure that no man has an advantage over me. I want to make sure I'm just as strong as them. So um, I, exactly. if that means working twice as hard, and that's what I got to do, then I'll do it. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, e it's easy for me when I interview gals, you know, um, it doesn't take very many questions to figure out the ones that are very serious about moving forward, which I feel you are, and, and others who, they like racing, but they like to do a lot of other things, and they say that they want to be an ass car driver. But yet when you hear that they also love to ride horses and dance and go to movies and, you know, the ones that are serious are focused on racing 100% pretty much of the time. And, and I, know, I know that you are, Ember, and I, I appreciate that in you because there's no pretense. It's very authentic and you're serious about where you want to go. And I, I like hearing that. So tell Thank me, you. you're welcome. So, so tell me now um, where, where you go from here. You're working on sponsorships. How can people find you, follow you, and help you? So tell us how, how should we get in touch with you? All my social media is at Amber Balkan 10, A-M-B-E-R-B-A-L-C-A-E-N 10. So that's going to be my Instagram, my Twitter. My Facebook racing page is Amber Balkan Racing. If you are interested in sponsoring me or think you may know someone who would be interested in sponsoring me, you can DM me on any of those personal platforms or email me at uh, my email is amberbalkan at gmail.com. Just my name at gmail.com. So I'm looking for anyone and everyone uh, who's interested in sponsoring. Like you said, I just want to be on the racetrack. I want to race cars. This is what I've given up everything for. This is what I work every day from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed for. This is all I want to do. And it just really would mean a lot to me to have, have the help. And I appreciate everyone who does reach out to try to help. It's actually really cool on how many fans are like, hey, send me over your marketing deck. Maybe, you know, my brother or something would be interested. And um, it, it all really means a lot to me. It's, it's cool that I have the fan base that I do even though I'm not racing every single weekend, it, it's neat to have all these people believe in me. And honestly, that's the reason why I haven't given up because I want to prove to the people that I can do this and, at, and that you don't necessarily need all the tools in the toolbox to live the life of your dreams. You just have to be creative, be resourceful and, and just keep working hard and, and be determined and never give up. So um, it's been a lot of years of this, but I really believe if you put in the work, it, it eventually comes full circle. So um, maybe 2020 is that, that year for me. <laughs> I think 20, I love the, the year 2020. I just think that sounds cool, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that that might be, how old are you, Amber? I'm 27 now. 27. Okay. So still lots of years left that you can be on the racetrack. So yeah, uh, I, I know you're going to do it. I just, I feel confident that you're going to get to, to where you need to be and that you're going to find somebody that believes in you and is going to, going to take you under their wing and, and become your, your sponsor. So is there anything I haven't asked you about that you would like to share with our audience? Not that I can think of. Like I said, I'm open to anything. So if you have any more questions for me, let me know. 
Okay. All right. Um, that sounds actually I would, sorry. I would like to add one thing. Um, lately I've been trying to share a little bit more of what I've learned throughout the years when it comes to looking for sponsorship. I know there are a lot of people that follow me that are dirt track racers or maybe racers at the lower levels that still need to find sponsorship themselves. I've been looking over lots of marketing decks and giving feedback and trying to help them as well, because I know how much I appreciated it at that when I was there, even now, the level I'm at, I'm still asking for, for advice and, and help when it comes to getting sponsors. But if you are a driver listening to this and you're struggling to find sponsorship and you just need a few tips or maybe you want someone to look over your, your marketing deck or racing proposal, feel free to reach out to me. I want to help anyone as much as I can. That's, that's awesome. And you, you may get bombarded now with, uh, with that. <laughs> that's, because okay. that's, a, <laughs> that's a, that's a huge offer for you to do, but it's true. It's, you know, my granddaughter races and from, from the first day you start when you're little all the way till, you know, it always takes marketing partners. It's just, it's an expensive sport. And yet, you know, it, we seem to be able to find people and new, new people. So they're out there. We just have to find the ones that we connect to and that partner with us. So I, I know you're going to do it. And I, I'm here to help anytime I can with you, Amber. I, I believe in you and I'd like to help and see that you get where you need to go. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today and sharing with our listeners, you know, about your story and about your dreams. And um, I, I'm just excited to see where you're going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, somebody told me when I started this, and they said, when you get famous, remember, remember the, the little people. And I always laugh because I said, well, I'm probably never going to be famous. But, you know, I'm going to tell you, when you're famous, rem remember all of us that encourage you and want to help. And, and we'll see you at the racetrack. I'll never forget because you guys are the reason where I am where I am today. I wouldn't be anywhere with it if it wasn't for my supporters. So I appreciate each and every one of you and will continue to throughout my entire career. Thank you for listening to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at International Women's Motorsports Association or on Instagram and Twitter at the IWMA Nation. And if you know someone that should be on our show, drop us an email at IWMA Nation at gmail.com.